of the precursor. For something. On a larger scale. Yeah. Another vessel. Another vessel. And that vessel, the first one was marred. That's who you were before you knew him. It was a marred work. Get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We were messed. Come on, y'all know we were messed up. We were, what they call it? Uh, broken and disgusted. <laughs> we were. We had broken cisterns. We had, we, I'd imagine we'd forsaken the fountain of living waters. Mm -hmm. Amen. But well, now we're going down, and that's the process that he's making us to lie down in green pastures. He's going to make us first to lie down in green pastures. But we have to go to him and see what he intended for us. I can't desire to be something that the potter hasn't already pre-designed. Mm -hmm. We have so many folks, they want to be an apostle, want to be a prophet, want to be a evangelist, pastor, and teacher, but they haven't gone down to the potter's house. They haven't submitted to him. Jesus had to submit to him. We have to submit to him so that we can find out what is the intelligent design that God has for us. It's locked up in our spirit. It's locked up in your spirit. That's why it's so important to be around prophetic churches because they can decode it. Take the mystique out of it. So you don't have to just be roaming. So you can eventually get to green pastors. Yeah, yeah. But we have to go down to the potter's house and ask him and let him do what he wants. Verse 6, he says, he said, oh, house of Israel, can I not do with this, you as this potter, said the Lord? Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So, it was, so we got to understand that. It's an element of trust. We got to trust. If he's going to be our shepherd, we got to confide and trust in the Lord. We just can't put it on our lips and not trust him. It, it can't, it's it, it got to be intimate. And we got to be willing to go down. And not have this false opinion, this falsehood, and these lies to roam through our mind and our psyche to alienate us from him and keep us living a, a, a life of isolation. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not supposed to be living in exile. No. That's why I'm taking time to try to dissect this scripture let you know that the Lord is my shepherd. I should not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. Not, not, a, not, not a, 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 a brazen place, green pasture, a fruitful place. He want us to go, I'm, we're going to talk about that too. He want us to get to a fruitful place. Tell you that he wanted us to get to a fruitful place. But the problem, we're still dealing with the old man. The marred work. It's the marred work. I don't want to go back to what's marred. Or broken. I want to go back to what God had originally pre-designed for my life. See, you already said it when we started this teaching. My sheep know my voice. Right? And they what? Follow me. And then what happened when they follow me? And I know them. That's where he want to get us to. And we got to understand that. You know, that's what it's all about. He want us to, he want to make us, he want to make us. The verdict is still out on my life. The verdict is still out on your life. He ain't finished with me yet. He ain't finished with you yet. Can't cast away your confidence. We gotta Amen. make sure we gotta we gotta stay steady. We gotta stay rock steady. Amen. Don't get distracted in our thinking. Don't let the enemy come in and ravage our minds. Amen. You gotta make up your mind. Say, I'm doing a good work. I can't come down. I already Amen. been to the Father's house. That's a lie. That's not me. Yeah, yeah. That's not me. 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 That won't belong to me because I'm in the Master's hand. I got the Master's touch. The word over the Ephesians. And ten, it says we are his workmanship, the same similar word in the Septuagint. It's the same word, which means that there's an internal weave that the Holy Spirit is doing on the inside of us to release his design. It's a poetic justice. And that's what it's doing. And we got to believe that somewhere along the line, it's got to dawn on us that day. It has to dawn on us and say, you know what? I've been down to the Father's house. If we can bend and bow for anything other than God, why not make up our mind we're going to bow for him? Yeah. Something that's eternal and not something that's temporary. We bow so long to the temporary stuff. He want to make us to lie down. So it, it means that pride has no rule. He want to make you to lie down. I'm going to show you something.
Proverbs 6 and 20. You got the Bible, let's go ahead. He want to make us to lie down. He want us to lie down. I refuse to allow Adam to, to, to be raised. I won't allow him to desecrate that which is holy. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. This is something that clicked my spirit today. I said, make me to lie down. You can tell when God has made you to lie down. And this is right here in Proverbs 6, 20 to 23. This is when you know that God has made you to lie down. I don't know how it's going to fit, but we're going to work it out anyway. I heard it. Proverbs 6 and 20 says, my son. Mm -hmm. You there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Mm, you know, I can just build with that. You know, it's not just talking about your father, your natural father, and your natural mother. How many know that? How many know in here? We, we already tweak this a little bit. Am I right or wrong? Uh -huh. Who's the father? Come on, work with me. God! Who's the mother? The church. So uh, that's why we just, uh, boy, oh boy. We understand that then, huh? Verse 21, bind them continually upon what? Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. Uh oh, hold on a second. Look at the progression. If you give the commandments priority. Yes. You have a respect for the commandment, the covenant, the scriptures. It says, what's it going to do? What is the fruit of me placing priority on, on the commandment? What's the fruit? The first fruit. When you go, it going to lead you. Uh -huh. When thou sleepest, it shall keep you. When you sleep, it's going to what? It's going to keep you. What's going to keep you? The commandments. The commandments that I get from my father, my heavenly father, and the commandments I get from the mother, the church. Right? When thou goest, it's going to lead you. When you sleep, it's going to keep you. Mm -hmm. Next one. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. And when you awake, it's going to do what? Talk with you. That's, that's a whole nother level of making me lie down in green pastors. Because we know, when we start off, green pastors are the principles. When I go, it's going to lead me. When I sleep, it's going to keep me. Am I right? Huh? Anybody there? When you walk, it's going to talk with you. Those are, that what a dimension in him. That's when you know that all of a sudden that he's made you to lie down in green pastures. There is no place off limits. Everything I do exemplifies that the Lord is my shepherd. When I go, he's my shepherd. When I sleep, he's my shepherd. When I wake it, he talks to me. That, that's, um, that's when we get to the point where we make it us to lie down in green pastures. You understand what I'm saying? That's powerful. And if we were to bracket, make me lie down in green pastures, it, it speaks to us on a, the highest volume. It speaks of the rest of God. It means to enter into the rest of God, which is his divine appointment for us all. We don't have to <laughs> be like sheep scattered, y'all. Or scattered brain because of some of the things we've allowed and tolerated through our life cycles. Whatever it may be, everybody on the same cycle, but most of us still end up psycho. <laughs> Amen, because we disconnect from God. But if we make God his, our center, then everything about us will evolve around him. <laughs> Amen. Even in the natural, all the planets evolve around the sun. The issue is, but we, I mean, we, well, anyway, we go on. His rest will have access into our souls and our identity will be his. Although there are times when your mind can't wrap around it. Remember, because when I go, he's going to leave me. When I sleep, he's going to keep me. When I get up, he's going to talk with me. And sometimes your mind can't wrap around it. You'll find that God will put the truth of it in your spirit, and it holds you even when you can't hold it. Put a hook in you. Some of us haven't got to that point where the scriptures have gone into rain. That's when you start lying down. When it moved beyond being a book, a history book, and a manual, when it becomes the living pistols 
becomes the word that's alive. The word that Jeremiah carried. Set up in his bones. The volume of the book. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So when I come on Wednesdays and, and when we meet whatever day that's been set, I don't come looking for a story. I'm looking for something that got a beat to it. It's palpable. Yeah. The, the breath of God, the, the heart of God, the mind of God. That's what's going to make us lie down in green pastures. That's why it's so important for us to go down to the potter's house. And not necessarily to our headquarters and our seminary schools. Amen. But return back to the Lord. Yes, sir. And let Him show us the way to walk in. Yes. Because the mountain of the Lord's house is going to be above all the mountains that are made. Yes. And we're going to return back to the author and the finisher mm -hmm. of our faith. Yes. We're going to stop struggling. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, like we said, or the, you know, we said in the previous teaching. We don't have to worry about that. We won't squander our living. Tell your neighbor, you won't squander your living. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about it. So he's going to hold on to us. So he, 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 want, he wants to get us to that point where I, uh, Psalms, even Psalms 139, 7 and 10, we just did this teaching. He said, where, where am I going to go from your spirit? Y'all remember that teaching in Psalms 139 and 7? Let me just read it to you. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. See, this is the same thing. He making me delight on the green pastures, mm -hmm. which speaks of the sovereignty of God. When I go, it's going to leave. When I sleep, it, it's going to keep me. When I awake, it's going to talk to me. There is no place. I'm telling you, I was talking to a friend I just met, and he was asking me what I, you know, what's my thought on some things, and I was telling him, I said, really, some things I haven't shared with our house, but it's on my heart. I said, the great divide, where the secular and the sacred, because it's the product of the mother, the mother of harlots. When we we put the great divide, you know, okay, let me just say it. The great divide, God never intended for there to be a secular, who we are in private, and the sacred, what everybody else knows. They, it's supposed to be together. Call it a theosis in the, theological circles. It means that God has taken residence in humanity. But we can't expand our minds long enough to think on that level. 